Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Everyone, today we're diving into Trash Goblin. The ultimate cozy game where you get to live the life of a little goblin shopkeeper, uncovering and upcycling weird and wonderful treasures. In this game, you'll be cleaning, chiseling and crafting trinkets to sell to the quirky cast of customers. It's like Power Wash Simulator meets Item Shop Simulator with a healthy dose of whimsy and charm. But does it have the staying power to keep you entertained or does it get bogged down by repetitive gameplay? Let's break it all down and find out what makes Trash Goblin so trashy in a good way of course. First, let's talk about the heart of Trash Goblin, the gameplay loop. At its core, the game is all about finding trash, cleaning it up and selling it to your customers. Sounds simple, right? But there's something so satisfying about the process. You start by chipping away at dirt blocks with a chisel, slowly revealing the item hidden inside. It's a bit like a puzzle game, where each piece of dirt you uncover gives you a little more information about what's inside. Once you have uncovered your treasure, it's time you to clean it. And honestly, this is probably the most satisfying part of the game. You grab a sponge, rotate the item and wipe up all of the dirt out of the green. There's something meditative about the whole process. Even though it's pretty simple, it's a nice way to unwind and just zone out for a while. Then comes the fun part, upcycling. You take the item you've cleaned and start attaching parts from other objects to improve it. Makes it either more functional or just more you know, ridiculous. It's like playing with junk and turning it into something valuable, which is a pretty great feeling. The best part, you'll be selling your creation to the whole cast of quirky customers. These folks range from irregulars with very specific taste of one-off visitors with centric stories. It's like living a little fantasy world where everyone has personality and you're just a humble shopkeeper. Each character brings something unique to the table and their stories, though simple, give you a glimpse into their lives. It's the little things that really make you feel connected to the world. There's something incredibly charming about the way the game builds these relationships. You're not just selling items, you're becoming a part of this cozy, close-knit community. The customers may not have complex branching dialogue trees, but you'll get a little glimpses of their backstories or personal quirks through their requests. I mean, there's even a mushroom character who's looking for a very specific kind of trinket. Now, let's talk about something a little more, you know, tricky. While Trash Goblin is undeniably charming, the gameplay can feel a bit repetitive after a while. Chiseling, cleaning and upcycling items is a fun at first, but after a few hours, you may find yourself doing the same task over and over again. It's a bit like going on an endless cycle of hiding up. While that's perfect for some, others might start feeling a monotony creep in. To keep things fresh, you'll want to set your own goals. Maybe save up for some new shop, decorations, or unlock new tools to speed up the process. The game encourages a laid-back approach, but if you are a type of player who craves for constant variety of actions, you might struggle to stay engaged. Also while the customization options for your shop are fun, they're a bit limited. You can add shelves for more storage or, or spruce up your space with a few decorations, but I wish there were more ways to really make the shop feel like your own. More colors, more decoration options, more freedom to arrange things how you like would make the experience feel more personalized. And then there's the issue of text. There are times when dialogue options feel pretty useless. Sure, you can sometimes haggle a bit over prices, but more often than not, you're just clicking through to get to the next part of the conversations, you know? The lack of meaningful dialogue choices or deeper character interactions left me feeling like there could have been more to explore. Now, because Trash Goblin is still in early access, there are a few technical issues to keep in mind. One of the most annoying bugs I encountered was the item placement glitches. Trinkets sometimes ended up facing the wrong way on the shelf, which is a minor but can be frustrating when you want everything to look neat. Another issue I ran into was the text box overlap. The dialogue boxes would sometimes end up right in the middle of the dinner screen, making it hard to interact with customers behind them. And it's a small thing, but it is definitely a hiccup that breaks immersion, especially when you are trying to focus on the game. So, is Trash Goblin worth your time? If you are a fan of cozy laid-back experience, there's a lot to love here. 
the quick characters, the relaxing gameplay loop and the art style are all winners. But if you're looking for something more dynamic, with less repetition and more depth in the narrative, you might find yourself losing interest sooner than expected. Ultimately, Trash Goblin is perfect for players who want a slow-paced, stress-free game in order to unwin with. It doesn't require you to rush or worry about high-stakes challenges, it's just about enjoying the process of restoring treasures and interacting with the, you know, peculiar cast of characters. So while Trash Goblin has room for improvement, especially in terms of variety and customization, it's definitely a charming experience for those who want to relax and enjoy the process. So thank you for watching if you are playing Trash Goblin or are planning to. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more cozy games reviews. Until the next time, happy upcycling. My name is Evelyn. Peace.